Hey everyone, it's uh, Tuesday the 18th of December. It's a Tuesday and the time, according to my plot on the wall up there, is uh, 20 past 9. And it's a bit wet and miserable outside. Pretty normal for this time of year, for Britain. <laughs> anyway, a friend of mine's been clearing out his dad's workshop who has accumulated all of these laptops. Now, a few months ago, I got half a dozen off of him when we first started clearing out the workshop, <clears throat> which basically just turned into a big storage area. Um, my friend was doing some more clearing out this week and gathered up all of these. There's 21 in total. Um, I know for a fact one works, and I think it's this one down here, the second one from the bottom. Uh, these ones are newer than these ones, as you can see, because some of these are bricks. Uh, um, I think what I'm going to do is split this into perhaps four videos because there's so many here. We're going to go through all of these, just have a look at what we've got in the condition. Like I said, I do know one of these work and I can't remember which one it is. I might have even hidden it in one of these piles. One of them here works anyway. Um, and then the next one I might go through this pile and see if we can get any to work or we'll do anything. But there's another video with this pile and another video with this pile. I think, I think that's the way I'm going to go with it. Otherwise, this video would end up being like four hours long. Anyway, I'm going to start with this pile. Now, I can already see this is an Acer. Now, you see it's got damaged hinge on that corner. Uh, what is it though? Does it tell me what it is? Sometimes on the inside of the lid here. says trying to open the lid and the problem is that's sliding across here there we go it's an Aspar 3610 I also even got the specifications written on here so I'll open that up and just show you that so you can pause it there's a bit of the hinge just fell off or the bezel it's the bezel on both sides that have broken so if this works I could easily fix it I could probably find another one of these as spares repairs and just get the bezel and the lid. So what have we got? You guys have probably read that before me now. So I should have, and I don't think any of these have actually been taken apart, so we should have a 40 gigabyte hard drive, we should have a Celeron M processor, 1.5 gigahertz, and 512 megabytes of DDR2 supports a dual channel. Oh, and built-in Wi-Fi. So this is one of the ones that I couldn't test because none of the adapters I had came uh, um, that came with all these fitted it. There's no screws missing from the bottom, so I'm guessing this hasn't been taken apart. All the covers are present. I'm guessing that's the battery. I'm not sure where the hard drive is because I cannot see. I don't think it's going to be under either of these two. So, damage wise, the screen lid and the bezel I would need replacing. I don't know if it's actually going to be worth it on that. But. And we've got another Acer which looks similar to that, but all these ports are different. So, what have we got on this one? All the plastics are intact. Oh, if I remember rightly, One of these Acers did power up and go into BIOS. The other one, there's a dead short when I plug it in. As soon as I plug in the adapter, it, you hear a crack and uh, the adapter shuts off. It goes into its um, overload protection. But I can't remember which one it is. This has got an AMD Sempron on this one. And this is an Aspar 3000. But there's no sticker on here to tell me what it's running, but 
The plastics are actually in better condition on this one. Some muck there. Hang on. I'm going to have to move my screen round. That's better. I can actually see whether from one in shot or not now. Again, this was built for Windows XP. But all the covers are there, all the screws are there. If anything, I've got a feeling the hard drive would be under there. So we will see. I can't actually see any cracks or breakages in the plastics on this, so that was a good nick. Apart from the usual scuffs and scratches in the lid. So the next one up is a Fujitsu Siemens. So I can open this one up. Have we got any damage to the plastics? We have a hinge cover missing. It's a Fujitsu Siemens Amilo. Amilo. But there's, doesn't seem like um, doesn't seem like there's any uh, model number on here. Not on this side of it anyway. It might be underneath. Oh, so apparently the battery can last up to three and a half hours. Turn down fan, four in one access external media. It's got built in Wi Fi, I can see that. USB 2, modem, LAN, WLAN, blah blah blah. Intel Centrino Duo, Windows Vista. Well, like, if this works, I could do something with this one. Probably wouldn't be the fastest thing on the planet, but. Ah, this is the one with the missing hard drive and the RAM. The cover is here, it just keeps falling off. So, with any luck, someone discarded this one just because it was old. And took the um, hard drive and everything out, you know, for data protection. And then probably took the RAM out to sell it. Or to keep as a spare for another laptop, you know, maybe they had another one. Cover is an absolute pain in the friggin' ass. I'm going to have to find some screws for that. I guess I should put the RAM in and whatnot before I do that. Right, the next one we have a Dell. I do have a number of Dells in this lot. There's a Dell, there's a Dell everywhere, there's a bloody Dell. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that was random. So this is an Inspiron 1300. I can see we've got a screw missing out of the bezel here. We've got two missing actually at the bottom. But um, I haven't been able to test any of the Dells. Oh, it's still got its blanking thing for the PCI thingy slot. Um, because it needs a Dell adapter, so I haven't been able to test any of these Dells. There was a Dell adapter with them, but the plug connector was too big for the socket. This doesn't actually give any other information on the top here. The keyboard's complete. That's what I haven't been checking. I haven't been checking the screens. I know there's one here, and I think it's the Sony Vio that's actually got a shared screen. That's all right. We don't have a webcam built in, though. Is there any info on the bottom? Built for Windows XP. All the screws are present. So if I'm lucky, RAM and hard drive is in there. If anything, you know, even if I ended up breaking all of these for parts, I'd have 20 on hard drives. <laughs> Not desktop hard drives, which is what I really, really need at the minute, but... Ooh, that is a very rough looking Fujitsu Siemens, isn't it? There's some cracks in the screen lid there, as well as a shitload of scratches. What do I think this might have been used in like a mechanics workshop or something? Because it is filthy as well. Battery's missing. Sc um, the um, screen or the lid hinge covers are missing. What's underneath it? It's filthy underneath it. Designed for Windows XP. Then it's got Windows Vista capable written under it. This is another Fujitsu Siemens Amilo. I didn't get the uh, model number off the other one, did I? <laughs> Don't. Where is the other one? Is this the same? 
it's not the same. They are different. Yeah, they are different. There's similarities, but they are actually different. So I've just noticed down the front here, where this LED panel is for your power and your Wi-Fi and whatnot, is exactly the same on this one. What is the model number of this one? Do we have it? It's a PI2515. I'm guessing that this one is probably a revamped version of that one, as this one's just got a Windows Vista sticker on it. So, it's full of mud. I wouldn't be surprised if this one does anything, to be honest. But again, apart from the damage to the lid, the screen hinges are actually working fine. I'm guessing something got dropped on this corner. One of the openers the screen okay. I can't see no cracks. I can't hear nothing when I press on it. But it is filthy. Very filthy. So, we've got a model on this one. What's this one? It's a PI. Uh, 15 something. I can't read it because it's... The sticker is actually damaged. Might be able to read it if I get a magnifying glass. That's probably the one that's in the worst cosmetic condition. Oh look, a very nice fetching pink Dell here. Which has got that sticky stuff all over the lid that some of them like to do. Yeah, it's got broken hinge that side. It's all broken. I think all the lid bezel. Actually no, the lid's fine. It's this bezel. Well, I'd probably be better off replacing the whole lot if I can. So keyboard's complete. Is there any damage? I can't see no damage on the screen. It's a bit dirty but it will clean up. Ah. I've got a funny feeling the bottom for this is in the pile of rubbish at Mum's. I'm going to have to rescue that tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't realise it was missing. Yeah, the RAM is gone. I don't know where the hard drive goes on this one. We've got two DIM slots, DIM A and B. Wi-Fi card's been... No, it hasn't. Wi-Fi card is this. What on earth is this? WWAN and UWB, whatever that is. We'll probably need a new DVD drive as well, which I've got tons of, so I'm not worried about that. Hmm, it's got HDMI. HDMI. Everybody wants HDMI. We've got, we've got two USBs that side. Two USBs that side. We've got Firewire on this. I thought that was a thing in the past. But again, that needs the um, proprietary bloody thingy. Ooh, we've got another um, Acer. What's this one? Acer Extensor 6600. Yeah, 6600. So what's this one? Windows XP, Mobile, in Intel Centrino. But this is weird because it's got a curved keyboard. I thought this was bent at first. Because I had it like that. And I, the way I was looking at it, it actually looked like the keyboard bent that way, not not an actual specific design. Got an onboard mic, but I don't see a webcam to go with it. Plastics are in fairly good condition on this one. It could have been this Acer that was shorting out. I can't remember. No, I don't think it was. No, it wasn't this one. So that's Windows XP. Again, all the screws are intact, everything's intact. What USB sockets have we got? Only two? You stingy bastards, only two. <laughs> that actually looks like that's the biggest one. And we've got one of my favourite brands now, Toshiba. A Toshiba... Is that a satellite? Yep, Satellite A100-522. What's this one? Windows XP. Battery's missing. 
someone's had the cover off. I haven't put it back properly, but there is RAM in it. Either that or it's just popped out of there, I'm not sure. Right. Screen is okay. Plastics are okay. It's got Celeron M and graphics by ATI. I'm just curious. Well, it would be if I can get that out. Is that DDR2? It actually does look like DDR2. It is. So this uses DDR2 RAM. What is this? 512? 512. I usually find with such laptops that they'll only go up to maybe a gig, maybe two gigs. Actually, I did have a Windows XP laptop, which was, I believe, a Toshiba. I actually regret getting rid of that, because it was a damn good laptop. Even if it did just, or was running Windows XP, it was a damn good laptop. Alright, so that's the last one for that pile. I'm going to have fun seeing if all these work, aren't we? All right. Got some room in front of those, that's alright then. Oh, tell you what, I was knackered dragging these upstairs. Right, so right on the top we have a compact. A brick, basically. Windows XP, you see a lot of these are XP there. All of these are intact. I know it's a Presario. Presario 2100. Smells damp. <laughs> yeah, screen is fine. Yeah, all fine. We've got the arrows for the screen. No, no juice in the battery. All the covers are present and the screws are present. That's good. Alright, next one. We have another Toshiba. A Toshiba what? I can't see no damage on that. That actually feels like metal. That sounds like metal as well. So it's a Toshiba Portage 7200 series. And that has got, it doesn't have a touchpad, it's got these buttons, two buttons there, then it's got the little the little um, mouse nibbly thing that a lot of Toshibas and IBMs used back then. And I actually quite like these. It's a shame they stopped using them. That looks in good condition. But is this... Ah, Windows 2000 Professional. It's got two data wipe stickers on it for some reason, so it's just been serviced like twice in this time. That is actually quite a thin laptop, isn't it? And yet there's XP's on here, like this compact, which is like a doorstop. Yeah, certainly wouldn't mind getting this going and cleaning up. Some of these I will definitely be adding to the collection of mine if I can get them working. So we've got an IBM ThinkPad next. Absolutely spotless on the inside. Dirt on the outside, it needs a good clean. Pentium 3, so I'm going to presume Windows 98. Is there a model number on here? It's a ThinkPad what? No, it's not got it on the top here. We've got it underneath. Yep, Microsoft Windows 98 Second Edition. So this is a ThinkPad. It's made in the USA. Oh, can't see it. I'm having difficulty reading it. Really? It's a 16 volt? I don't know if I've still got a universal power adapter. I might have to get one in the new year. Because I don't think I've got 16 volt, I've got 15 volt. Anyway, moving on. 
That IBM is a definite one that I'd want to keep in my collection if I can get it to work. Anyway, we've got a Hewlett Packard here, or an HP. Bit dusty. So most of these are actually in cosmetically good condition. They're dirty, but they're not broken, chipped or cracked or anything. So... BT Home IT Advisor. You can cut. Oh, that was only blue tacked on there. I thought that was glued. Or should think this is like donkey's ears out of date. <laughs> Right, so Windows XP, yep, AMD Athlon fitted to it. Any battery juice? No. <laughs> it's an HP Pavilion ZE4200. And I have got something similar to this in my collection already. I don't think I'm going to be keeping all of these, to be honest. Another Dell! That... I think someone's dropped it on that corner, don't you? So, this is... What's that sticker? Oh, I ain't got it. It's got a Windows key on it, but I can't read what the actual sticker is. And there's one of these that I couldn't actually bloody open. So it's a Dell Inspiron 510M. Oh, battery's dead. It's got three buttons missing on the keyboard. Windows XP. Is the screen alright? Yep. It's almost that brick. This is an, a an Evesham. Evesham? E-V-E-S-H-A-M. Which uses... A weird ass power supply, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this because I do not have one like that. And I'm not that much of a gambling man. If I could find the pin out of it, then I could probably stuff some wires in there temporarily just to see if it works. I think this has got an XP sticker on it. Yep. It's quite a nice design though. You can easily see where the two speakers are. D pad down here on the mouse. I've never seen that before. Button, button. And then we've got the mouse pad. Yeah, I've never seen like a, a direction pad there before. That's unusual. But again, it looks in. I think this has got a rattle to it as well, if I remember right. Something's loose inside. Right, I'm going to stack any more on there. I'm just going to bring them off this pile and put them there to look at. So, we have another Dell. I actually don't know how many I've got in total. Pop this one open. This is an, an, an Inspiron 9100. XP, blah blah blah. Sounds best on Sound Blaster 24 bit advanced HD. That's all okay. This is a br look at that. I think that is. It's got DVI, VGA, thingamajig out. I can't remember what you call it. One, two, Actually no, one of those is not a USB port. So there's four USB ports. One says power, it's got the DC label. Usual phone and LAN. DVD drive. All the covers are in place. Windows XP Home Edition. Heavy as hell. <laughs> oh. I have got a pile of adapters here, for those that don't know. I have loads of laptop adapters. Anyway, we've got another Dell Inspire on here. Again, there's nothing to mention with the hinges, they're all okay. Windows XP, Pentium 4, and this one is a 2650. 
couldn't miss those mouse buttons, could you? Can you see those? <laughs> Big buttons! I think this is missing a CD drive. Yep. But again, I've got CD drives I can put in there. Don't know if I'll have a cover to go on there. Ooh! It's got a floppy disk drive on this as well. Four and a half amp max. I'm going to put those over there, do I? Now, I actually don't have a Sony laptop in my collection. And the other laptops I would probably keep, if I can get them to work, are the Dells. Maybe not that pink one. I'm going to look on eBay, see what I can get spares-wise for the ones that need spares. And if I can't get them or they're too expensive, I'm just going to put them on eBay as spares or repairs. Here we go, we've got a nice Sony VAIO uh, Windows XP sticker on it. Sony Notebook Computer, DC 19.5 volts model, PCG-9H2M, and I read all that upside down. But this is the one... I can get it to open. Yeah, this has got the smashed screen on it. Maybe as there's a bunch of laptops here with the same size screen, I could just... I've done it before. Totally different brand of laptop, but the screens have managed to swap, so... That's very, very clear. What's this? AMD Power Now? AMD Athlon? Power? No, battery's dead. No surprise there. Ah, this is one that I couldn't figure out how to bloody open. This is a Samsung. It also has a Windows Millennium Edition sticker on the bottom. But it's got this button here that I cannot figure out what you're supposed to do to open it. It's got a button here which has got a lock on it. But then I don't know what that does. I'm doing something totally wrong, aren't I? Let's see, it's got that latch there, unlock. Ah, there we go, you got to lift it. Ooh. Just like the IBM and that pink down, it's got a horrible all over it. Right, so this is a Samsung GT8000 series. Yeah, Windows Millennium, Windows 98. Well, that actually seems quite stylish for that sort of era. Maybe I'm just used to seeing black. But that required that sort of power connector, and I'm not sure I've got one that will fit. I'll have to have a look. Right, we're nearly there. I've got three more. Two of those are identical. So we've got ooh, Fujitsu Siemens again. This is probably the cleanest. No, it isn't. This is one of two of the cleanest Fujitsu Siemens. It's another Am Amilo, Amilo, or however you pronounce it. Celeron XP. It's got quite a nice layout as well. I presume these are the spears right there. In the middle. It has been closed for a long while collecting dust because there's an imprint of the keyboard on the bloody screen. That doesn't look broken. It's good. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, yeah, just got myself right in the chest with it. So this is an L6820. And the next we've got is a couple of these RMs. Um, I have got an RM in full working order. Yeah, that was a surprise. Because when these were at Mum's, I didn't actually open these, so I had no idea I had coloured the keys. Um, we've also got a power button missing up the top here. Well, the button is there on the circuit board, but the actual bit you press, press is missing. Missing? Jesus, mouth work. Yeah, this one is exactly the same. 
same. This is lap 11. That one's got lap 33. For those that don't know, RM specifically made laptops for schools. So these are ex-school laptops. That is probably why certain keys have actually been highlighted in a different colour. But this other one is exactly the same. But this one's actually got scrawled all on the lid, the problems with it. Power issues, freezing, will not start, remove battery. Well, if it's got power issues, I can guarantee that the will not start and freezing is a result of the power issue. But um, maybe if I take both of these apart, if we presume this one's not working either, I can make a good one out of the pair. Like this one, for example, has got the silver button, power button. That's what's missing on this one. So if that's all it needs, and I can take that one apart and just bung that button in there. I know it's dirty and probably not worth it. This has got the battery. So, is that just another blanking thing? Yeah, it is. So this has got line in, microphone, headphone, wire, far wire rather. Two USBs there, two USBs there. So it's got four USBs. Just says disk drive on it. But everything is intact on the bottom, so maybe this one works if I can find the power supply to fit the jack. Oh. That'd be an interesting one. It's usually not very easy to get hold of school issued computers. Unless you're lucky enough to catch when the school is having a throw out and you can go and ask them, you know. I've no idea what that was, but that can go in the bin. <laughs> right. So, I think I'm going to call it quits for this video. I've gone through them all. I know that some of the ones, especially the ones that I know run DDR2 RAM, are going to need some spare parts. But typically, the antiquated ones, as my mum called them, <laughs> are absolutely fine cosmetically. You know, there's nothing broken, chipped or damaged apart from that one Dell. Um, so yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone. I will talk to you again in the next video, which will probably be about these laptops. Bye.